deeper, I'll ask you anything. Let's start with you. You know, everyone knows you. You're a fantastic singer. You know, tell us something about yourself. Basically, I'm uh, an opera singer, and uh, I used to be a child prodigy. I started my, uh, my career in a very tender age. I was about 10 years old, and uh, all my colleagues were about 40 years old. So I already had uh, this kind of uh, powerful voices, and uh, I also was uh, playing seven instruments. So basically, um, I've done a very huge career in uh, uh, the Western countries, so USA, Europe. I'm Italian. And uh, so basically Italy is the land of opera. Opera is very famous uh, in uh, Italy. And so uh, after that, uh, I had a very important spiritual journey that uh, led me here to India, to this fantabulous country. And uh, from there, I started thinking that uh, after almost uh, uh, 20 years uh, of career as an acclaimed opera singer, I sang with the best uh, opera singer of the world, the tenor Luciano Pavarotti, for the uh, Grammy Award winner Ennio Morricone, for, for the Italian state television. I won seven international competitions and all. Then I thought, maybe I want to find something new in the music, something uh, more exotic for me that can stimulate my creativity more. And after an amazing <laughs> dipping in Ganga River, I still remember the feeling. I saw a kind of light and lots of spiritual energies around me. And uh, since that day, all the time when I'm in India, even when I, I, I just have some free time, spare time, I go and meet the people, the normal people. And I like to be uh, completely dipping in this uh, culture. Also because the music here is much more lively, uh, less boring compared to the Western music. So you always have uh, also, for example, if we speak about uh, the classical music, because uh, here I've done both collaborations with the pop uh, musicians and as well as with classical musicians, because I'm very versatile. Basically, I can uh, sing from a very old repertories belonging to the 16th century up to the contemporary, um, contemporary repertories. So that's why I'm uh, in the encyclopedia of opera. And I'm the only one maybe who is still alive, and she's uh, in the encyclopedia, actually. It's quite funny. But then uh, what, um, what is very beautiful is that both in the pop and in the classical, I wanted to do um, a fusion. So I created a new brand uh, and patented it, which is called the Bollywood Opera. So already in the writing, it's like Bollywood Opera together. It's already fusion also there, because I like to do this crazy <laughs> and uh, kind of uh, sparkling associations. So um, I, I did this genre of fusion between Bollywood and opera. And I'm the first time ever real opera singer to do this in the world. So I'm very happy and very, um, very proud of this. Also because uh, nowadays, uh, just one week ago, T-Series, uh, the best uh, Indian label, has uh, uh, released my second song. This one is uh, That's Amore, who has a very innovative concept. In fact, I'm using three languages together, Hindi, English, and Italian. In fact, Amore, the word Amore means love. And it's basically uh, a kind of, um, hmm, what to say, crazy, yeah. Uh, crazy concept because it's the way the Italian girl conceive love, which is more like a free bird, and uh, they want just to enjoy life. They don't stick to the same man again and again. And instead, the way that I found uh, love is conceived in India, so it's more like uh, uh, sometime I've seen even girls uh, to, to sorrow, to be uh, sad if uh, some love will break up and all. Instead, in Italy, it's more like, okay, uh, one, one love is finished, I will find a new lover, and that's it. Like, so I was just wondering, is this real love? So it's the question mark that I'm doing to all of you of the audience. And uh, so when me in the video, I'm saying that's amore, this is love, all the crowd around is doing this gesture. What? Are you crazy? This is not love. So basically, there is always 
the conflict between either to enjoy life and to go roaming around with lots of uh, uh, experiences and adventurous lovers, or either to stay and to stick uh, with the same man. So this is also the question that I want you people to, um, to reply to. And uh, for me, love is whatsoever makes you feel good and without any hypocrisies, without any conventions. I belong to a family which uh, has been very, very conventional. And uh, instead here, uh, because I'm a demo royal house in Italy, also for a gold medal for my artistic career. So all my teenagers' age was very strict, like in a Swiss college, and uh, very tough also to handle for a teenagers. Because when you are a child prodigy, you never, uh, you, you never are together with your uh, uh, friends of the same age. So I was always dealing with older people, older people. And then after this dipping in Ganga River and this beautiful adventurous experience in India, I thought that actually uh, it's like a rebirth for me. Because here I can do, I can be free, I can do whatsoever I want with no, not much conventions, not hypocrisies. Though, so this is, mm, has made me very happy and also has increased my creativity. So I'm very happy for this and um, I want to make viral these gestures and because it, they always say that Italian folk is a crazy folk and I actually think it's, it's true. <laughs> and they, they move a lot, their hands, uh, when they're talking. Instead, here in India, they are more polite, more, no? And uh, that's, uh, that's quite nice because, uh, you know, when you travel a lot, I'm an adventurer and a big traveler. So if you see my passport, there is no more space for the visas because it's full, full of, uh, of, of visas. I like to do adventurous uh, things. And this, uh, uh, it's always a stimulus uh, for me. Or for example, I can and stay and be living with the princes and dame and nobles and royal house and uh, after some time I can just go and live with the tribal as I don't know if you have seen in uh, some of um, articles I was living with the tribal in Africa uh, naked people playing drums with them and the, for me it's also a research um, because I'm also an ethnomusicologist for understanding the music and the, the rhythm the vibrations which is uh, maybe ancestral, which uh, comes from centuries ago. And this makes me very happy because, you know, when I, I combine these different sounds that I find all around the world, and then I re-elaborate, and I also put some opera things in that, that's amore. <laughs> that's <laughs> the result. Okay, okay, what are you planning in Bollywood, you know? Uh, you are here, and what do you think about the Bollywood music? I think it's amazing, it's um, very vibrant uh, and it's a, always a huge, uh, huge creativity, huge production and uh, the artists are awesome. Also because, you know, compared to the Western countries in which everyone, every musician, even in the University of Music, me, myself, I needed to always to be, um, stick to the uh, to the score, to read and every note, to write and all. Here, I don't know, maybe Indian people are supernatural people. They remember everything, all the notes, everything by heart. And that's even all the Sanskrit repertories, but even the, the nowadays repertories. And that's amazing because I think they have some, uh, you know, plus point that in Western countries we don't have. And they are very fast. They compose like uh, nothing because I think Maybe in Western countries we have too much, uh, you know, boundaries, uh, too much thinking about the things, uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, to make uh, the things more problematic than what they actually are. Instead here it's more like immediate, because I think uh, the structure of uh, Indian folk, it's more like um, instinctive, and that's I like, that's why I like to, to go in tribal and to, to, to see also the instinctive part, part of uh, humanity because I lived too much uh, in that, uh, you know, very rational uh, aspect of humanity and instead now I'm discovering this other side which is uh, amazing and uh, it's actually giving me lots of response. Uh, so I thank you all the fantastic comments that I received on my video on that Samore on uh, YouTube, YouTube channel, Pop Chart Buster T-Series. So many likes, so many lovely comments. I really, really uh, love you all. 
and I'm very happy that you appreciated this kind of risky project, but I'm an adventurer, so I always do risky projects because it's something new, something innovative, so you don't know how the audience can respond to that. And uh, finally, I found that uh, that's, uh, that's going very good, so I'm very happy, and uh, I thank uh, whomsoever is uh, God, I don't know if Ganesha, Allah, uh, Buddha, or whatsoever, I feel that uh, all the good energies are around me, so uh, it's amazing. Cutting it now. Yeah, good. Okay, tell us about, you know, there are, there are reports you'll be doing, you'll be working with Asha Bhosleji and tell us, your, you know, we also came to know you're a diehard fan of Asha. Yeah, actually, I think uh, I met her previously because I was always listening to her song because her voice is very, uh, very similar to an opera voice, even though it's a different technique, but still it's a classical kind of style. So I, in Italy, my mentor, my teacher, my guru, and uh, I did lots of collaboration with him, who was uh, the best opera singer of the world, Luciano Pavarotti. And uh, here I found a new mentor and a new source of inspiration in Asha Bosle. I've got uh, the, um, the chance of meeting her at her residence in Bombay with her lovely family. And I think there is also a spiritual connection between me and her uh, because uh, her granddaughter is actually uh, has born in the, my same day of birthday, 16th January, and uh, it's nice. And um, basically, I love her song, her style, and uh, her kind of songs are very open melodies, which is uh, suitable to be singing also in opera style. I don't know, for example, if you, um, if you take this song like, uh, and now, what do we can elaborate on it, on this for creating the magic? Maybe I, I can do like an homage to this fantabulous, legendary singer, Asha Bosle, but in a new way. Listen, opera vala. to Asha Ji because uh, she hosted me at her residence with so much love. And uh, what I learned in my life, uh, whenever I meet uh, the highest level profile people like Luciano Pavarotti, Asha, and I've met many, and you Morricone, Katia Ricciarelli, for name a few, and the more they are high, the more they are humble. And that's, uh, I think, the, the the turning point which makes the difference. Because you know in Bollywood sometimes you meet lots of these small, small actresses or artists or so-called great, great singer just because they have got the chance and the luck to sing in one uh, movie song and they are full of attitude and uh, full of uh, snobbish because maybe they have something to hide because they are not person of value. Instead the more the one person has a value, the more it just is show he himself or herself like he is or she is. And that's great. And um, we are thinking about some collaborations with her. So we are elaborating some new things. So stay tuned. OK, are, are you planning a single uh, to pay a tribute to Asha? <coughs> the same opera style? Yeah, actually, yes. So it's uh, something uh, in which I want to uh, elaborate some of her songs uh, in my style. And uh, I'm very creative, so I'm doing something, something that you have never seen before. So just stay tuned and wait for it. And now I'm planning a new song from my, one of my favorite movies, Shan, Rat Bahi. And it will be my tribute to Asha J. And I will be singing it in opera style.
global advertiser for innovative outdoor solutions.